Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. Today's video is going to feature an in-depth tutorial on all the software that's needed to run the Buttkicker Gamer 2 on Microsoft Flight Simulator. I've been finding it difficult to get all the information in one tutorial, so hopefully this video will cover everything you need. And if you do find this helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel. First of all, you need to have the legacy version of SimConnect installed. This does come as a DLL file in the original sim, however they recommend using legacy mode. This enables the software to communicate with the simulator. Next we have some more software. First of all you've got the SimShaker for aviators, which is free. And then you have the SimShaker sound module, which costs around 25 US dollars and you can buy it from Andre's shop. I will be leaving all the links in the description below. I think it's worth mentioning that when you do get to Andre's shop and you want to buy the sound module, the only currency you can pay in is the Russian ruble. I just used PayPal and it converted it into my local currency, so there was no problem there at all. So just remember you can't change the currency to pay him in, but PayPal can do that for you, or you can run it on a credit card and it'll just go through as your local currency anyway. This is called Voice Meter, and what it does is it connects and mixes any audio hardware with any software sound to several outputs. It allows you to mix, solo, mute or split audio and send it to your speakers and headphones. This is really useful for multiple butt kickers and shakers, so this is an option. I've got the software, but I actually don't use it for this. So the software that you really need is the legacy version of SimConnect, SimShaker for Aviators, and the SimShaker Sound Module. So the way it works is SimConnect connects to the Sim and then tells the SimShaker for Aviators when certain types of sounds are generated. So it'll tell the SimShaker when you're rolling on the ground, for example. The SimShaker then uses the sound module to generate bass frequency outputs, which the sound module then pushes out through the USB sound card and into the butt kicker gamer 2. I found this really useful diagram and it just shows you the setup. You can see here that the transducer plugs into the amplifier, which then goes into the sound card of the computer. The software then communicates with the simulator, allowing you to tweak the settings of the butt kicker in the SimShaker for Aviators software. So basically you can customize the balance of the vibrations for different settings in the sim. Even better if you have an extra sound card, because then you can actually cut out any other audio you don't want going through the butt kicker from your computer when you're playing the sim. But most of us don't want to have to buy an extra sound card and we just want a simple solution. For more information about how to connect the butt kicker, please check out my video review in the link above and I'll explain it in more depth. Since I fly in VR, the sound comes through the headset anyway. So basically I'm playing through the headset and I simply disconnect my speakers so the sound doesn't come out of them. And after setting everything in SimShaker for aviators, I then use the remote to change the intensity of the vibrations as I feel fit. I avoid listening to music on my PC when I'm flying just because it might interfere with the vibrations. However, if you do have an extra sound card, that's how you get around that. As I said before, I like to listen to music in my AirPods anyway, so it doesn't really affect me, and it's simple and reliable. But I have heard some people explaining some cool setups they have when they have multiple sim shakers all over the place, especially in driving sims, and apparently it has way more immersion, but it's guaranteed to hit your wallet hard as well. Before we move on to the individual software, I thought I'd give you a few startup tips in terms of setting up the sounds. So in Windows Sound Settings, what you need to do is set your VR headset as the default device, in the Sim Shakers for Aviators, set the butt kicker to the sound card to which your butt kicker is attached. To run it all, start by opening the Sim Shaker for Aviators. It'll appear for a minute and then disappear to the system tray. Then you can start the simulator. As you open the simulator, you should see both the Sim Shaker for Aviators and the sound module both appear as dialog boxes. As the simulator finishes booting up, the Sim Connect Red X that appears in the Sim Shakers for Aviators app should turn to a green tick. You should then be able to fly with the butt kicker working. I use all this software with my Reverb G2 and it works so well, especially after making some adjustments in the software. Now let's take a close look at the SimShaker sound module. Just to let you know that you can download a demo version of this first before buying it. In demo mode, only the ground bumps and the stall shutter effects are available, but it lets you check if your hardware is compatible with the SimShaker sound module, so it's a really good idea to run the demo first. Next you select the dedicated sound card, which is my high definition audio device. I just renamed it PC speakers. I have one channel running, so it's mono. Again, you have more options here to play with. I don't enable the limiting compressor, nor the booster. I also don't start the module minimized, I start it maximize, and I always check for updates. You can see the text log information at the bottom there with the version number and other update details. When you first get the sound module, you're going to need to experiment with the different sounds and the different volumes. And here you can see you've got the different WAV files you can select to try out, so you can just select one of them here. And you can see here how much of a vibration is going through to the butt kicker, how strong it is. So you can increase the volume and press play as many times as you want. And you can see the volume is increasing with the size of the sound waves. You can also check the repetitions here. I just run it on looped. So here you're basically setting up the volume and how much feedback is going into the butt kicker itself. For more detailed sound settings, we'll use the SimShaker for Aviators software. Sometimes you'll see this dialog box appear. It means that you've already got the sound module running. I notice this happens quite often because when you do open the SimShaker for Aviators software, it automatically opens the sound module too. So if you open that again, it's just going to try and override it. But if you just click on OK, it seems to fix it fine. 
I'm not 100% sure about why this happens, but it's something I've just learned to live with and click through. Next, we'll take a closer look at the SimShaker for Aviators software. I'll explain the menus and options, and I'll also give you my recommended settings for each type of plane that work best for me. Here you can see the special options menu in the software. Notice how the SimConnect status is ticked green. I have everything here set to default, and the frame rate limiter set to none. Next, we have the service menu. Now this is a really important menu because when you first start using it, you're gonna to have to make sure that you set it up properly. So here you can see you've got the output mode. We need to select sound, butt kicker, and similar devices. Just ignore the other options here. I always start my sound module automatically with the SimShaker for aviators, as I mentioned earlier. Then you need to choose the SimShaker sound module. I leave simultaneous output off, and I turn label logging off. It's funny, you've got an option for massage here, and you've got some other miscellaneous settings for other simulators here. So here we are in the effects settings. Just make sure you've got the correct simulation selected here, which is MSFS. And on the right, you've got three options with models of aircraft. And I'll show you how I set mine up, and hopefully it'll help you dial yours in too. Just remember that these settings do work. However, you'll get much more control if you have a separate sound card installed. You'll also notice that I've turned off the G-feeling effect for each plane model, because apparently this setting doesn't work well in MSFS. So these settings are for the generic jet engine model. You can see I've got APU rumble on 50, Canopy door open and close is set to 10. Engine rumble and piston beat is set to 50. Flaps movement is set to 30. Gear turbulence is set to 50. The g feeling effect is zero, as I mentioned before. The ground bumps are 45. The ground roll is 35. The landing gear up and down is 25. Speed brake shutters are 25. Buffet stall shutters, vortex ring state is 50. Thrust reverser is 45. Touchdown is 60. Turbulence is 65. And wheel blocking is 35. And the next settings are for the generic piston engine. Here we've got the canopy door open and close at 40, engine rumble and piston beat at 50, flaps movement at 20, gear turbulence at 35, nothing for G-feeling effect, ground bump 75, ground roll 70, landing gear up and down is 65, speed brake shudders 50, buffet stall shudders, vortex ring state 50, touchdown 75, turbulence 65, and wheel blocking 50. And for the third model type, which is the generic turbo prop engine, We've got the canopy door open and close set at 35, engine rumble and piston beat set at 50, flaps movement 45, gear turbulence 20, g feeling effect 0, ground bumps 45, ground roll 30, landing gear up and down 35, speed brake shudders 50, buffet stall shudders, vortex ring state 60, touchdown 50, turbulence 60, and wheel blocking 35. I really hope that watching this video helps you guys get set up with the Butt Kicker Gamer 2 and it makes such a difference in VR. I can't recommend it enough. So please do let me know in the comments if you've got any questions or comments about the video and about setting up the Butt Kicker Gamer 2. As always guys, if you like the content, please subscribe and don't forget to smash that like button as always. I really do appreciate each and every one of you who subscribes to the channel and I look forward to making the next video soon. In the meantime, as always, take care and stay safe.